Hi everyone, and thank you very much for joining us. Unfortunately, there was a small technical issue there in which I forgot to unmute my microphone. Now that I have, I'd like to welcome you to this webinar. My name is Chris from Integrate AV, and today we're looking at Smart Notebook 20, the basic version. During the webinar, if you have any questions at all, you'll notice that there is a chat icon on GoToMeeting, which is our platform for these webinars. We have a number of members of the Integrate AV education team in that chat. And so if you have any questions, please ask them in there. Conversely, at any time, please feel free to email us education at integrateav.com.au and we'll be able to help you out with whatever you need. So the question on the lips of many DOE teachers, what happened? So notebook 11, specifically 11.4, has been available for DOE teachers for the better part of a decade. And it is also the kind of mainstay of, of classroom teaching technology. Notebook 11 is now off the software catalog and it has been replaced by Notebook 20, the basic version, which is now on the catalog. So critically, Notebook 20, the basic version, can now be pushed out to all teacher computers via the UDM. So it can be automatically deployed just like the old version. The first thing I will mention though, one of the reasons why this has left the catalog is that Flash is no longer supported. Now, this came to a surprise for a lot of people, Adobe, actually removed Flash, or they announced that they were going to remove Flash in 2017, and now it's been removed from everything, not just Notebook, but also web browsers and a host of other platforms. So Flash was removed by Adobe, not by Smart, and certainly not by Integrate AV. So what is in this new version? How is it different from what we have been using in the past? There are two main differences that we're going to look at today. The first one is this here, Smart Lab, which is Smart's gamification software that has been added in the last few years. The second one is what you see over here, which is the Smart Learning Suite Online. This is also quite new, and this is a platform that is really exciting. Uh, a lot of development and improvements are being made all the time and we'll have a look at that as well. It's a way that teachers can uh, present lessons, either uh, notebook files or PDFs or, or PowerPoints or anything like that, and they can push the entire lesson to student devices and also get students to interact with those lessons in real time. So what's going to happen? As soon as you have downloaded the new notebook software, as soon as it's been pushed out to your device, you're going to see this window here, and it's going to ask you to sign in. So what you're going to do is immediately click sign in, obviously. What you're going to wanna to do is sign in with Google rather than with Microsoft. This is due to a number of things happening in the background in the DOE with Microsoft credentials. The Google ones just work better for our purposes. And it also helps if you wish to integrate some of the smart software with Google Classroom, your Google Drive and things like that. So when you sign up with your at education.newsouthwales.gov.au email address, you are starting a 45 day free trial. So what are we talking about with a trial? And what are we talking about with this basic version? The way this works now is that we have kind of two facets to our Smart Learning Suite subscription. There is a Smart Notebook, which is the same software that everyone's familiar with. That's the software that lives on your computer as its own application. And then there is the Smart Learning Suite online. When you sign up the first time, you're going to get 45 days for free 
of a trial of the new version. So that's full functionality. Once those 45 days are over, if you don't purchase a subscription, you're going to revert back to the basic mode. So what does that mean? In Smart Notebook itself, in the basic mode, some features are restricted, so you won't have access to Smart Lab, for example. You'll be able to play existing Smart Labs, but you won't be able to create new ones or edit them. And also, if you're using the basic version with a non-smart product, you're going to see a watermark. And that watermark is this down here. So if your computer is plugged into um, a smart panel, even the old smart panels with the uh, projector and the four pens down the bottom, you're not going to see you're not going to see that watermark at all. However, if you're plugged into a different type of panel or display or projector, you will see the watermark on basic mode. And then in the smart learning suite online, even if you don't have a license and you're in this basic version, you are going to have full functionality. The only thing that is different is this storage limit of 50 megabytes. So smart are saying that 50 megabytes is approximately 10 lessons that you can store on there at any one time. Okay. So what everyone is asking themselves at the moment is what happens to my old notebooks? The notebooks that you've created in uh, Notebook 11.4 will convert into Smart Notebook 20. There are a few exceptions to that though. And again, as we spoke about, the main exception is the elephant in the room, which is Flash. So if you have text and images and uh, buttons and click-through links in your old notebooks, that's all fine. That's going to come across without a problem. The only thing that you will have a problem with is the old flash activities in the old notebook. So things like we have here, Vortex sort, keyword match pairs, all that stuff is um, going to have, have not necessarily a problem, but it is going to need to be converted into something else. Now, these flash uh, activity types in the old notebook are going to auto convert into smart lab activities. So these will just automatically convert and that will become activities of the, the following sort. So Vortex is going to become super sort, category, super sort, uh, keyword and pairs and image match. They're all going to become an activity called match them up and multiple choice is going to immediately become an assessment, which is also called smart response. So let's have a look at what they're going to look like now once they're converted. As I said, they're going to be converted into a Smart Lab activity. So Smart Lab is part of Notebook and it's also part of SLS Online. So this is the Smart Learning Suite Online. It's a bit of a mouthful, so often we refer to it as SLS. Oh, now I know that for a number of schools, SLSO means something different. However, if I refer to it like that, um, please forgive me. Smart Learning Suite Online can be a mouthful. This is where we are able to create and play interactive games that we tailor to our own content. We can create them very efficiently and we can use whatever content we're trying to explore with our students in an efficient but very engaging way. So here we have an example of an old flash-based activity. This was the image and keyword match. As soon as I open this old notebook activity in Notebook 20, it's becoming this smart lab game, which is called Match em Up. So you can see on the left-hand side, we have our images. And on the right-hand side, we have our artists. What I'm going to do is drag Mona Lisa in here. I'm going to drag Leonardo da Vinci here. You'll see they match, so they're going to come up the top. Now I'm going to drag Starry Starry Night, and I'm going to say, oh, I think this is by Monet. So I'll drag them together. Now, if I check my matches, 
you will see that we have one correct, and obviously Starry Starry Night and Claude Monet are not correct, and so the night there gets a little bit of a sunburn. When we're looking at lab activities, you're also going to see this icon on the right hand side. For the majority of lab activities, what you are able to do is come over to this icon and when you click on it, you will see my teacher code. This is what lets me push this activity out to student devices. So if my students now go to hellosmart.com and they enter my code, they are going to be able to play this activity on their own devices by themselves. Hello Smart is totally web-based, so you don't need any new um, software downloaded on a student device. All they need is an internet connection and a browser. We'll have a little bit more of a look at that coming up. Here are the different types of lab activities that you're going to have access to for at least the first 45 days, but you're also going to be able to make them in Smart Learning Suite online. So I'll give you an example of the way Smart, have, uh, Smart Lab has streamlined some of the old activities that we would do. So I used to be a language teacher, and so I really liked these fill in the blanks or uh, close passage activities. However, they were very annoying, time-consuming to make. But now you can see, I can just drag these up. The great thing here is how easy this is to make. So obviously I can get a student to come up and drag these up and we can read it and discuss what goes where, for what reason. Well, here we need a noun, here we need a, a verb. So let's go through, let's find our verbs. Yeah. The impressive thing is how easy this is to make. So I'll show you what this looks like. So, as I said, this is a fill in the blanks activity. I have just typed my text and then I just click on the words that I want to be blank. And of course, I can click again to make them not blank. Here, I can check answers when prompted. So once I'm done the activity, I can say check my answers or instantly. This will give the student instant feedback. So we have a little bit of the ability to differentiate here. And then of course we get to select our theme. Uh, let's go for the monsters. And there is our new activity. So easy. Okay, what else is in the new version? Well, we have all of these pens that we've become accustomed to. And they do a few extra things as well. So for example, um, we have all the classics. With the magic pen, obviously this was a pen that would disappear over time. However, a nice little feature that it has at the moment, you can see that ink disappearing, is if we draw a circle, that's going to produce a spotlight. Just a moment. There we go. And so now I can drag that around and we are drawing students' attention to one specific part of a page, specific part of an image, things like that. If I draw a square with the magic pen or a rectangle, it's going to turn into a zoom box. So now I can move that around and zoom on, zoom in on specific parts. The other great thing we have is the shape recognition pen. So this is new. My drawing is terrible, as you can see, but once I draw a shape, it's able to immediately turn that into the perfect shape. And now these become objects as well. So we can do things with these objects. For example, I'm going to select this one and click on the little drop down menu. What I'm going to do now is divide this shape. So let's divide this into four equal parts. And there we go. These are also now their own discrete pieces. Let's take our circle 
and let's divide this. We'll divide this, let's say, into four sections. We'll show our fractions. So here, as you can see, we've got our fractions as well. And the other thing that we can do, for example, with the rectangle here, is we can show the interior angles. So when I make it a bit bigger, we can see it's giving us the interior angles of 90 degrees. If I were to do it with a triangle, you see no matter how bad your drawing is, mine is hideous. We're able to see that that's an isosceles, that's a right angle isosceles triangle. Perfect. Okay, what else is there new? We have a bunch of new interactive widgets that are going to replace some of the older widgets in the old software. They're the same thing, but a little bit slicker, a little bit more developed. So obviously here we've got a timer. I can set this with my finger or with my mouse, and I can also do some things to differentiate it from others. I can change its color. I can also make it count down or count up. And I can also make it a circular timer. Here we have our clock. The clock is really cool, especially if you're teaching younger students and teaching them time. So I'm able, for example, to change the time with my finger or with my mouse. If I come here to the settings, what I'm also able to do is, again, change the time. I can make this rather than an analog clock, I can make it a digital clock, or I can have both digital and analog. If I want to, I can hide the second hand, second hand. so we are just looking at hour and minute. I can reset it, and of course, I can have 24 hours if I want to do that with the digital clock. Now, over on the right-hand corner here, we have our pull tab. So what we can do is we can type extra information here or even uh, directions and then hide them to the side. And then we have our dice. These dice are great. Now, a lot of teachers are going to ask, do you have the 10-sided dice? Unfortunately, at this stage, the 10-sided dice isn't in there, but we can recreate it with the spinner, which I'm going to show you on the next page. But with our dice, we have some really cool options. So I'm going to come to the settings column just here, and here are our dice settings. Just move the timer out of the way. Okay. So I can increase the number of dice. So I can actually have up to nine dice, and they will all roll at the same time, which is great for Yahtzee. I can change the color of my dice. So I can put multiple dice up of different colors if we're doing some kind of competitive group activity, something like that, maybe playing a game. Then we can also have text dice. So I can write words on each of the face of the dice. Then we can also do custom dice. So this is dice with images on each face. Let's have a look at the ways we can use this. Okay, so these are all about randomization. Here we have our dice, obviously, and here we have our spinner. Let's have a look at how I can change the spinner. As you can see, I can increase the number of segments. So if I used to do a 10-sided dice, what I could do here is just do 10 segments, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. In total, I can get up to 12 segments. And when we click on it or touch it, it's just going to uh, spin and land on a random uh, segment there. Where do I find all of these things? Well, just like in the old notebook, just over here, this tab on the left-hand side, we have our gallery. The quickest way of getting stuff 
from the gallery is simply to search for it. So if I search for dice, then it's going to be, obviously we have pictures of dice, but we want our interactive dice. So I'm going to come to interactive and multimedia. There they are. If I want to bring those dice onto a page, I'm just going to grab it and drag it up. And there it is. Now let's say I've spent time making a spinner or a set of dice or something that I really like, and I'm going to want to use more than once. What I can do is actually save it into the gallery so that no matter what notebook I'm on, I can pull it out and have that exact same little tool. So how do I do that? What I'm gonna do is grab the tool that I want, come over to the left hand side, and I'm just going to drop it in my content. And now my content has all the stuff that I would want to say. So I can just pull, um, let's try a text dice. I can just pull that out and it's there for me. Oh, and I wanted to show you some examples as well. So I'll just get rid of this. Here are some dice that I have prepared earlier. So here we have dice with students' names on them if I want to randomise whose turn it is for something. And then we have some image dice just here. So obviously here we have um, some countries' flags. How do I make the image dice? Well, it's really quite easy. What I've done here is I've gone to the web and I've found the images that I want to use. Now I can just uh, copy and paste them onto my notebook. I'm going to come to my dice and click the settings code just here. And I'm going to make some custom dice. So then I'll just get the images that I want and drop them onto the face of the dice that I would like them to be on. So it is very quick and very easy. There we go. And now, image dice. Perfect. There are a few other things we can do with dice. Um, here, we're just using very basic word dice, very quick to make. We can use them as narrative prompts for storytelling or even for sentence construction. Let's say we need to create a sentence out of Prime Minister, Pro, okay, what were the chances of that all coming together at the same time? That's fantastic for probability class. So Olympian Dolphin, Tropical Island. Once upon a time, there was an Olympian who uh, loved to ride his dolphin around his tropical island. Not very imaginative. But as you can see, that randomization is really quite cool. And it's very easy to make. There is also something new in the gallery, which is our 3D objects. So our 3D objects are really, really fun to manipulate and use. So obviously I can rotate like that. I'm able to spin at different axes. Now there are a number of 3D images in the gallery itself. However, you are also able to import 3D images. So for example, from the Trimble 3D warehouse, you're able to go and browse 3D objects and bring them into your notebook. Another new thing, um, and this is fantastic for mathematics teachers, is we have GeoGebra, um, well-known uh, plotting tool integrated into notebook itself. So if I come here to my puzzle piece, I'm going to see that GeoGebra is right here. This is just going to load. And now I'm going to insert my GeoGebra widget. Because this is integrated into 
notebook itself. I don't need to go off to the web version. I don't need to sign into browsers and find different things. I, I can do all of this straight inside my notebook. So now I'm just going to make sure I've got the proper pen going on. What I can do is I can write, actually, now I have to remind myself how to write equations. As you can tell, I was not a maths teacher. Let's say y equals x squared. Now I can drag that equation into GeoGebra. You'll see it's going to recognize it, y equals x squared, and it will plot the parabola. When I move the parabola, you will see that the equation changes to reflect the new position. Okay, that is a very quick rundown of what Smart Notebook Basic 20 is looking like at the moment. Let's now have a look at the other side, and that is the Smart Learning Suite online side. Okay, so as I said, Notebook is what we're in now. This is the program that is installed on your computer and lives there. However, the other new part of it that you have access to, both in the paid and the basic version, is Smart Learning Suite Online, which you can see up there. So with the Smart Learning Suite Online, we're able to uh, create and deliver lessons. We can make collaborative workspaces. We can do formative assessments and game-based activities. Those game-based activities are specifically the same ones that we looked at in Notebook, which is Smart Lab. Okay, let's have a look at how the Smart Learning on Smart Learning Suite Online, the SLSO, works. What I'm going to do now is leave Smart Notebook and go to my browser. Okay, thank you, GoToMeeting. All right, here we go. This is what the Smart Learning Suite Online looks like. This is my dashboard. How did I get here? All I did is I navigated to suite.smarttech.com because I'm going into the Smart Learning Suite. Okay, you will see that I have here my class ID up the top. When I scroll down, I have all of my different lessons that I have uploaded in the past. So you can see them all there. In order to make a, a new lesson or to start with an existing resource, we click here to this big green button, Add Activities. One of the really nice things about SLSO is the ability that it gives us to uh, liven up and enrich resources that we have in the past. So every teacher has PowerPoints and um, PDF documents and things like that. What you can do is if you have notebooks, PowerPoints or PDFs, we can upload them straight into SLSO and then present them to students, share it out to student devices, but also add more interactive and more lively content, things like uh, we can insert a YouTube clip into the middle of that lesson. Um, we can put in a response quiz. That's a formative assessment tool. We can put in a game-based activity. This is a smart lab activity. Um, we could put in different graphic organizers and insert them into the middle of it so that we might want to you know, collaborate and brainstorm, for example, in the middle of the lesson. It's really, really powerful. So what I've done is I've come to import resources and I have chosen a PowerPoint. Now I prepared this earlier so you don't have to wait for that to upload. And here it is, this is my PowerPoint. So I'm gonna hover my mouse over and I'm going to come to the editing screen. This is what you'll see as soon as you upload it. So as you can see, this was just a PowerPoint, very simple, four pages. What can we do to make this more interactive and more engaging? Best thing to do is to come down here to our blue button in the bottom left hand corner and click on that. And now, as you can see, we can start adding content. 
So maybe at the beginning of the lesson, we want to watch a short video about houses around the world um, in order to engage the students or establish some prior knowledge or something like that. So we can come to YouTube, click on that, and now we can search. The good thing is this is a safe search powered by Bing, so we're not going to get at all content. We're also not going to get ads, which is, um, for my money, the best part of it, and no comments and suggested videos. So I might want to put in just a four minute video there. I'm going to select it. I can also preview that if I like in this little window and add. Now you'll see that has put that YouTube video as the second slide in that lesson sequence. Here, we've got questions here that we may want our students to answer. So what I can actually do is convert this activity into one of two things. You'll see down here, currently this page is view only on student devices, so they can see it, but they can't do anything with it, but we can convert it to an activity. So we can make it an individual handout, so each student has effectively their own copy of this that they can work on, or we can make it a collaborative workspace. That's our students can come into teams and work on a certain space or a page like this together at the same time. I'm going to make this one an individual handout. So now all the students can complete that themselves and I can see what they've done as their teacher. And in the next one here, let's make this some group work. So I'm going to convert it to an activity and I'm going to make it a collaborative workspace. Okay, let's see what this looks like. So I'm gonna finish editing, and now I'm going to start my lesson. For the students to join my lesson on their devices, it's exactly the same process that we used earlier for getting my students onto my Smart Lab activity. You will also see that my class ID is exactly the same as it was that last time. So right now, please feel free to jump on if you like. Just type hellosmart.com into your browser and then enter my uh, teacher ID, which is 737921. You'll see that I've got teacher pacing and student pacing. Right now it's on teacher pacing. What that means is that wherever I am in the lesson, the students are going to go there as well and they'll be able to see that. However, if I come back to student pacing, now the students have the power to navigate through that resource at their own pace. Right now I'm leading the lesson, so I'm going to come to teacher pacing. So this here was the slide that we made a handout. So this is where I wanted my students to do this for themselves. So I have people online at the moment. I can see a car full of people here, that's good, and who are currently working on their handout. And from this, uh, this control screen here, I'm able to select a student and let's see what Jack has done. I see that Jack has found the drawing tool. So what Jack is able to do, and what all my students can do, they can draw, they can erase obviously, they can import images and they can also type. So Jack is a fan right now with the drawing tool. Okay, let's see what Nerida is doing. Okay, fantastic. So I can see that Nerida is using the text function over here. Fantastic work, Nerida. I can see she is progressing really well. I don't want to leave Leah out. She has also found the drawing tool. Well done, Leah. And of course, Anne, lots more drawing. Okay. So I'm now going to move away from that activity. And that's going to bring the students with me. This is the one now that we wanted to do as a collaborative 
exercise so students can work together. Let's press set up. We currently have four students in my class. Of course, you can have many more than that. Uh, so I'm going to put them, I don't want everyone on one team. I want to show you what it's like with different teams. So I'm going to put the four of them into two teams. And now we have the names. The great thing is that I can actually manipulate these groups. For example, I know for a fact, Nerida and Leah do not work well together. They're distracting, they giggle. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move Nerida over here. And I think Anne and Leah work really well, so they can stay there. Wonderful. Now we can start the workspace. We can see in team one, we've got Jack and Nerida, and in team two, we've got Anne and Leah. By clicking on either of these, I can see what my teams are doing, and I can see it live. Now, obviously, they're still getting started. Here you see live some drawing happening right now. The other thing that I can do is I can also contribute to these spaces at the same time. So I can now draw a tick and my student is going to see that. Or I could add some text here and that's going to appear live. And let's check in on team one. Ah, I can see that either Jack or Nerida has found the ability to, there we go, we're using the image as well as the drawing tool, as well as the text. Excellent work. Okay. Now, obviously we have a uh, final slide here. Let's add some more. I don't have to only convert pages to activities during the editing phase. I can also do it uh, on the fly as we go spontaneously in the lesson. So once more, if I come up to my people tab up here, I can make this either a handout or a workspace. Now let's say that our conversation about this uh, topic has been going really well and I want to um, maybe add something new into it as we're going. What I can do is add a new whiteboard. So now I, as the teacher, I'm able now to write and um, get suggestions from my students and make notes and things like that, which is also quite cool. And of course, once I've written a few things up or even um, nothing at all, and I want my students to be talking about this and contributing, I can just make this blank page a collaborative workspace as well. Or if I made it an individual handout, that means each student has their own blank space where they're able to do a writing task or something like that. And of course, I can go back and see what they've done. Now we have a couple of cool things that I wanna show you when we return home to the front page. Obviously, you've seen that we can add resources like this, but we can also explore resources. There are a number of lessons that are already there for us. Often these are themed, so for example, St. Paddy's Day, uh, Pi Day, 314 in the Northern Hemisphere, but we have also these lovely collections, these uh, curated and themed groups of lessons. So I really like this emotional literacy that um, SMART have put together where we have all of these great lessons ready to go. So, you know, about growth mindset or about goal setting and work habits. So they're fantastic. The other thing that is really, really good is this training section. If you're unsure about how to do something on the Smart Learning Suite online, the training session that they have made here is really, really useful. We have videos for all of these different steps and it can take you step by step through all of these different ways how we can use the Smart Learning Suite online to the best of our ability. 
Now on the subject of sharing, there's also a couple of great things. So let's say I've made a great lesson, houses around the world, and I wanna share it with one of my colleagues. Very easy, I'll come to these three dots here, and I'll click share link. So when I get that teacher link, I can send that to my colleague, and when they open it, a copy of this lesson appears on their own smart learning suite online. So they own that now. When they change it, it doesn't affect my original. The other cool thing is I can do a student access link. If I copy this and send it to my students, or maybe post it on Google Classrooms or email it to them or whatever, they can actually access that now at any time. So they could be revisiting that resource at home for uh, consolidation and revision. Or if I have individual handouts or quizzes in that lesson, they can be completing those as homework. And when I go back into that lesson, I will be able to see what each of my students has actually done as part of that homework task, which is fantastic. As you can probably tell, this makes a really powerful tool for distance learning. So a number of schools use this as their main method of sort of lesson presentation uh, when schools were out during COVID. The ability to push an entire lesson and everything that you're seeing into student devices of any kind, whether it's a laptop or an iPad or a phone, and also have them interacting, not just with the content, but also uh, with the content together collaboratively, uh, it's really, really powerful. Okay, a few concluding remarks. How can you find help? How can you find more resources? Well, one good thing to start with is to simply go to YouTube and type in Integrate AV, which is us. And when you come to our channel, you'll see quite a few videos. A lot of these are obviously about the exact sort of things we were talking about today. So how to create lab games, oops, didn't click on that. How to do all those things. So there are some nice brief tutorials in there that you may like to explore. What other resources? Well, there is also the Smart Exchange. If you haven't been to the Smart Exchange for a while, you'll find that it's had a bit of a facelift. Um, it has new content, not ancient content, but there is a lot of great stuff there. You can find content that is aligned to um, Australian standards. However, the content uh, that is Australian in there is nowhere near as, it's not as big, not as numerous as obviously that from the United States or the UK. You will find very, very useful stuff. Some of it just maps to our curriculum perfectly fine. Um, but if you are creating lessons, I would really strongly encourage you to put those lessons on the Smart Exchange because the more content, especially the more Australian made content we get up there, the better. How to videos and trips, that's actually what I showed you just before. And of course, uh, we do a lot of training, a lot of professional development. You can get in contact with us at any time, 1800 742748 or you can simply email training at integrateav.com.au or education at integrateav.com.au. Likewise, you can find us on all the socials, on Facebook, Pinterest, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. We offer a lot of things. So um, yeah, free little video tutorials, PD opportunities, uh, the occasional competition with nice prizes as well. Thank you very much for sticking with us. If you have any questions, we're going to leave the chat open for a little while, just in case you have any questions in the last minute. But if you do need anything else, please just reach out to us, uh, give us an email or give us a call. So thank you very much and um, have a great rest of the afternoon.